Hey, hey everyone, Felix from Nintendo Life here, and today we're here to review F099 for the Nintendo Switch. This review was written by the wonderful Charlie Wackles and converted into video by me. That was supposed to sound like a car passing by. So, what do you get when you take the first entry in one of Nintendo's most overlooked franchises and cram it with battle royale mechanics after nearly 20 years of dormancy? You might expect a shambling Frankenstein's monster of a game held together by nostalgia-baiting stagnancy, but instead, F-099 is a clever reimagining that injects new life into a Stone Cold classic while dodging many of the pitfalls found in Nintendo's other battle royale remixes like Mario 35 or Pac-Man 99. As a launch game for the SNES, its vibey sci-fi mode 7 graphics helped plant Nintendo's flag in the 16-bit era as a graphical powerhouse. But F-Zero is more than just a tech demo. It's a high adrenaline white knuckle racing game with some serious teeth. F-099 takes care to pay its respect to the original's Top as Nails legacy while giving it new mechanics to help it fit even better within the 99 formula. After all, F-Zero has always been about speed and survival. Firstly, boosting has been completely reworked. Instead of getting one big speed boost per lap, you now have to dip into your energy bar in order to zoom ahead of the pack. That change brings some extra push and pull between simply surviving and actually winning that rewards skillful play and knowledge of each track. For example, if you're low on energy, you could conserve your power as you sip around the rough, slow down inducing corners on Mute City. Or you can boost through the rough patch and hope you don't bump into others during the home stretch to the pit area. Marrying this new system with the familiar gameplay is an example of how F-099 cleverly streamlines and modernizes the original. It's a tactful change that makes sense in the context of the original game and adds a new layer of depth without overcomplicating what already works. 99 also introduces a spin attack which lets you bump into other players with a chance to deal some extra damage. If you happen to KO another pilot with or without a spin attack, your energy meter increases, meaning you have more to allocate to boosting without worrying about depleting your energy too quickly. There are significantly more races on the track during a normal race compared to the original. As its name suggests, there are 98 other competitors on the track and like in the original, there are extra NPC cars that function as obstacles you have to avoid. Beefing the race account all the way up to 99 is such a cool change and the spin is necessary to make such a chaotic traffic jam work. Bumping into other people and NPCs isn't just a consequence of F-099's race ways either. Instead, it's been worked into a brand new mechanic. See, when you hit other vehicles, it now generates super sparks, which anyone riding behind the Clash can pick up. There are even special golden NPCs that drop extra super sparks when you ram them, creating an extra point of conflict and upping the ante of getting those sweet sparks. Picking up these super sparks fills up a separate meter. Once filled, hitting boost with A ascends you to the elevated skyway. You won't just move faster on this skyway. No, boost pads will appear on specific spots for you to pick up even more speed, and there's no obstacles of any kind, excluding other players, on this elevated track, meaning it's not just a tool to get ahead of the competition, it's also a great Hail Mary that you can use to safely escort yourself across the finishing line in case your energy is running so low that you can't risk running into other pilots. The Skyway adds yet another point of metagaming and balancing risk and reward. In a game where one bump, error or boost can send you back 20 places, it's a great trump card. Timing your ascension to the elevated track correctly can also let you skip over certain challenging parts of the track, because the Skyway also creates shortcuts over sections of non-track below. It won't return you to the ground until you're back over the track. That means that you can actually extend your boost time if you get the timing right, adding a welcome little skill check. On top of competing for the first place, you'll also be competing with four other races. These rivals are decided upon based on your individual match history and in-game rank, and outplacing even one of them will net you a few points to go towards ranking up, but beating none of them will cost you though. This system accommodates F-099's challenging nature well and adds an opportunity to reward players who might be new to the series. 
These new additions all infuse new depth and multiplayer sensibility into a previously single player only banger. They don't just feel at home as part of the gameplay though, they also look right at home in F-Zero's original art style. From the starting areas, which has been reworked to house 99 races, to the skyway, everything nails the game's 16-bit plus vibe. It even adds in cool touches like speed lines and extra flourishes to explosions and the like. The only part that doesn't fit in is F-Zero 99's new in-game user interface. It smacks off that sterile Switch era feel with squished sans serif fonts and soft edges. Considering the menus in other parts of this game are studded with art from and inspired by F-Zero's original instruction manual and dripping with neon purples and yellows, it makes no sense that the UI is this bland for any other reason than readability. You can add skins for each of the four available racing machines and new options for your player card. The player card displays your Switch username, the vehicle of your choice, and has some customizable pins and backgrounds. As for the skins, pins, and backgrounds, they are all unlocked by competing in races and completing various challenges. Competing in races is unfortunately F-099's greatest pain point. While it is very easy to hop into a single 99 player race, Grand Prix mode isn't always available. It unlocks on a timer and requires tickets, which you earn from competing in other races to enter. The time-based barrier of entry is frustrating, but given how long Grand Prix races can be, keeping them available at all times could prove difficult for matchmaking after the launch period. That being said, Tetris 99 makes the same mistake in its Maximus mode, and it takes its sweet time in matchmaking before filling out half of the average lobby with bots. Given its relative rarity, requiring tickets on top of the time constraints adds insult to injury. In addition to the Grand Prix modes, 99 cycles through other modes like Pro, which only features difficult circuits, and a team-based race. The latter splits the assembled players into two groups and tracks various stats throughout, position, number of KOs, etc., before totaling up all the points at the end of the race and awarding a win Splatoon style. These are nice make goods, but it's frustrating that the original's main mode is skated behind a timer. Thankfully, if you can play F-099, you can also play the SNES original since both are locked behind a Nintendo Switch Online subscription. So if you're itching to race in a Grand Prix, you can revisit the original. All in all, despite its relatively unchanged look, F-099 is unexpectedly refreshing. Though it may not be the return for the franchise that fans hoped for, it's a triumphant and welcome look back at Captain Falcon's first game with a clever twist. F-Zero is simply suited for the 99 style structure in ways that Tetris, Mario, and Pac-Man aren't. It was already an elimination style battle royale, just a smaller one. Adding more players doesn't just feel perfect for F-Zero, it feels natural. This may not be the definitive way to play F-Zero, but it is a brilliant take that supplements what works so well in the original with thoughtful additions that make chasing victory utterly addictive. We here at Nintendo Live give F-099 on the Nintendo Switch a 9 out of 10. And now with the review done, it's time for Felix's personal thoughts. This game is incredibly addicting. It's a long time since I've had this much fun with a multiplayer game. I tend to prefer single player adventures, but this one really hooked me. I loved how you had these four different cars that all play very differently, but you can get good result with them all with the right tactics. And something that I enjoy even more with this game compared to, for example, Mario Kart, is that there's no items, so it's all pretty much skill. You of course have to find the car that you're most comfortable with and figure out what places is best to use your boost and when to preserve it, when to enter Skyview, etc. But it's just so incredibly well put together. I love the mechanic of the Super Sparks and Skyway because you may be a bit further behind because you chose a slower car, but then because you're driving behind so many players, you pick up all these sparks and suddenly you can just raise ahead of them on this skyway. It's incredibly, incredibly satisfying. And it's always like, oh, just one race more, oh, one race more. Ah, oh, the rival system is also just so fun because even though you might not be good at the game, you still have these four other people near your same skill level that you race against. My only gripe is that you can't really play with friends. Sure, you can try and join a race at the same time and there's 99 places, so chances that it does happen is pretty likely but you can't make a private room or just join your friends in a race. Hopefully, it's something that gets added down the line, but for now, just racing with strangers is also really fun. 
All right, that was all my thoughts. I had a lot to say just because it's been a surprising hit on my Switch recently. I'm not really playing anything else. And yeah, what do you all think? What's your best placement so far? Well, let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to check out our website insidelab.com where you can find reviews like these but in written form. And if you like this video, why don't you boost your way towards that subscribe button and give it a little click, without it exploding of course. Stay safe, play some F-Zero, and we'll see you in the next one. Felix from Nintendo Live, out. Oh.